Hey, it's Chris Grove here doing another film review. Today, I am gonna do Firstborn. Uh, Firstborn's a 1984 film. It was directed by Michael Apted. Uh, it stars Terry Garr as a young mother who's raising her two sons, played by Christopher Collette, who plays Jake, and Brian, played by a very young Corey Haim, and this is his first role. Uh, it's kind of what you would expect from a Lifetime movie today, but better, much better, and way more poignant and has a lot to say. It's a family drama eh, with a little bit of criminal intrigue, criminal thriller, kind of thrown in a little bit. Um, the film star, well, the, the film stars, other than Terry Garr and the other actors I just mentioned, is Peter Weller. And Peter Weller is known, he plays Sam. And Peter Weller is known for RoboCop and that kind of thing, but he really should be known for this role. This role is amazing for him and he really sinks his teeth into it. And I wish he was primarily known for this role, but he's known for RoboCop with all the reaction videos and people that, you know, think they know him, they know him from RoboCop. So I love him for movies like this and movies like Shoot the Moon, which uh, I'll probably be covering soon as well. Shoot the Moon is great. Um, kind of one of those other yeah, serious dramas they don't, they kind of make those uh, it's definitely better than a lifetime movie but anyway back to firstborn so terry gar is a single mother raising her two young sons and well 15 and 11 and i was about Corey hames age when this came out so i can really identify with him um their father is coming back into town from a business trip and they're all going out to dinner and it turns out that uh, he's getting married. And there's some hope that Terry Garr has, uh, who plays Wendy by the way, that's her character's name. There's some hope that she will, that they could rekindle things, you know? Um, but yeah, not so much, he's getting married, so. That's happening. And she's been doing some dating, some casual dating here, you know, doing the single mom thing. And Jake is the firstborn of the title. Uh, and he is very protective of her. And Christopher Collette does a great job as Jake. He is amazing. Uh, he's protective of her, he's protective of Brian, he's protective of the family, you know. He's just. He's just trying to be, you know, the, the, the good oldest, the eldest son, the firstborn, if you will. So that's the firstborn of the title. Well, she starts dating Sam, played by Peter Weller. And Sam eventually moves in. And it's kind of, kind of sudden, you know, very like, okay, kids, this is what's happening now. Sam's moving in, get used to it, you know, go with the flow, don't rock the boat. And of course, you know, the kids are suspicious because that's what they do. Kids are suspicious um, of new parental figures in their life. Uh, being a child of divorce, I can vouch for that. I've also dated women with children and I can also vouch for that. So I can kind of relate to Sam on a certain level. Uh, but he's into some shady shit. He's into some stuff. They eventually, he's got this wild idea. Apparently he runs a security system company, but you know, he wants to run a restaurant one night when they're going out to dinner and you know, he needs to cut his steak with a chainsaw. He's like, oh, we should open our own restaurant, Wendy. Let's do it. And she's like, hell no. No, actually he's, well, she's like agreeable. But Jake's like, hell no. You know, Jake's like, uh-uh. You know, let's, mm -mm, we're not gonna, you know, what are you guys doing? What are you thinking? You know, what about your security company? 
you know, here's a 15 year old questioning a middle-aged man. Well, he's probably in his late 30s, maybe 40-ish, I'm guessing, you know, but he's still, he, he's kind of got that baby boomer dream thing happening, you know, and he's just trying to, to milk that a little bit. So, anyway, um, they end up, you know, going through this, this plan that they're going to start a, a restaurant, and he's trying to find, you know, get, gain the capital to do that. He's got investors and all that good stuff. Well, Jake's totally suspicious, and at first he wins them over. He buys Jake a motorbike and then promises um, Brian a three-wheeler, and Hell, if I were that age, and I was that age at the time, I got a three-wheeler. You know, that was like the best gift ever. So, you know, he's kind of he's kind of trying to bribe him a little bit, or you know, earn their trust. Maybe I don't know. He's kind of trying to buy him, um, but it's sweet and it's endearing, and he seems kind of like the good stepdad figure. I mean, they're not married, but it's he's the good stepfather figure in their lives. So, yeah, after a while, Jake's a little, little more suspicious. And he starts kind of plugging around and notices that uh, he finds some paraphernalia in the house. Drug paraphernalia. Uh, later on, he finds some cocaine. So that's how Sam's planning on financing this restaurant, is selling a bunch of Coke, basically. So Jake has been kind of like this model student. He's got a wonderful girlfriend played by Sarah Jessica Parker. I know, big name. One of his best friends, or actually I think his actual best friend is Lee, played by a very young Robert Downey Jr. So, He's also on the well. He's on. He's on. He's got some great friends, but he's also on the lacrosse team, and he's good at it. And he's he's you know he takes his schoolwork seriously. And but he's got this one English teacher who's just a total asshole. He'll call out kids in class. You know, he's the kind of guy that'll be like, "Yes, you got an F, and you earned it." You know, kind of guy. You know, not just see me after class, and we'll talk and. You know, talk about your future, but he, he calls him out in class, which is just so wrong on many levels. So he's one of those teachers, and his grades start to slip. He starts to get more aggressive on the lacrosse field as Sam is entering the life and uh, entering his life and his mother's life and his brother's life and. You know, he starts to act out a little bit. And there's one scene where he calls out the teacher on his, on his bullshit, basically, and it's glorious. Then he takes off on his motorbike and, you know, rides like a bat out of hell. And it's just a great montage scene. He's really acting out, though, in, you know, in, in a big way. And, and his brother Brian, he's having to bail him out of getting into fights at school. And he's becoming more violent and bullying more and you know all this stuff is so real and I could totally see happening in this real life situation also Wendy is now a cokehead but Sam's got her on coke you know they're having cocaine parties with his pinball machine downstairs and you know they're inviting all the the, the boomers who want to relive the 60s and you know, some grass they're having a nice uh, coke party and uh, I kind of get where the intrigue of why people would want to kind of go and forget about their problems a little bit, but Sam is definitely shady. And it, yeah, yeah, I mean, not good, not good. So, so Sam ends up just basically, you know, just gung-ho about getting the restaurant and just kind of like trying to tell Jake to sort of back off because there's one scene where Jake tells his mom, hey, I'm concerned. 
and he's totally playing the adult here. It's like role reversal. And she's like, you don't talk to me that way. Don't question me. I'm your mother. Because then act like it. Beautiful line. And Christopher Glad does it very well. Uh, Corey Haim handles his part very, very well too. In a lot of tough scenes. Um, it basically is a nice family drama. I say nice family drama. It's it, it's wow. What would you do in the situation? It, it really does sound like a lifetime movie, but. Again, it's way better. Michael Apt's direction is better. It's just so good overall. And it ends in kind of a, it ends with a motorcycle chase and a fight. <laughs> and I'm not gonna spoil it completely because it's really worth checking out. A lot of people think the ending was kind of like, eh, let's sort of tack on this thriller ending to this family drama. I remember Roger Ebert said that. Siskel and Ebert, I think, were both kind of like, they liked everything up until that point. Um, they liked that it was a, a character study, really, of Sam and Jake and Wendy and all their dynamics. And, whew, you know, it, it's got a lot going on there. But then it ends in this cliche mo motorcycle chase and fight scene. And, um,. That's how they choose to, to wrap things up. I thought it worked. You know, I could see everything that going down the way it did go down. Uh, is it realistic? Yeah, I would think so. I could see some people saying it's not realistic, but you check it out, you decide. It's a good film. All the, all the actors do a great job. Um, Terry Gar is amazing as Wendy. You know, she goes from this loving mom who's feeling really hurt that, you know, she doesn't have the second chance with her with her father. And she's kind of you know, on the rebound when she meets Sam. Uh, she's not kind of on the rebound. She is on the rebound. And so you, you understand her point of view. You understand Jake's point of view. He's the firstborn, the oldest son, and he's trying to be the protector of the family. A lot of people, I've seen some reviews where people say that there's some sort of Oedipal thing going on there. No, he's trying to protect Jake and Wendy, or Jake is trying to protect Wendy and Brian. And it's done in a, hey, I'm the oldest male in the household, and I know the patriarchy and all, but you know, I'm here to protect, you know, my mother and my little brother, my little bro here, you know, we're, and when Sam lashes out his little brother, you know, Brian, which, you know, by the way, Sam, uh, Peter Weller, and, and, uh, Corey Haim do a wonderful job in that whole scene, uh, and that was a tough scene. And apparently, in real life, Corey Haim was so afraid of Sam, or so afraid of Peter Weller, um, because he didn't turn it off after they yelled cut. You know, he kind of kept it going and kept in kind of method actor motive. And I think at one point, off camera, shoved him up against the wall. So the rumors say. I don't know. But rumors are rumors. Um, Sticking to the facts, though, it, it's it's just it, it's very much a solid film. Um, it's so good, it's so so good, and so underrated. I remember it did moderately well at the box office and got some pretty good uh, PR back in the day. I remember seeing it in Denver with my mom. We were visiting my grandparents. I remember just seeing it there. Um, it was came out in October, and it's such a early to mid fall kind of movie. Um, the setting where they live, and it was filmed in upstate New York. You know, nice, quiet suburban neighborhood. Uh, just community had that kind of community feel to it. And I was living in the Grass Valley, Nevada City area, 
at the time, and uh, it really reminded me a lot of that. I know it's opposite coast, but still had that same communal vibe. Neighbors didn't have fences between them, and you know, just, hey, you wanna come over and borrow whatever? Sure, cool, you know. And it just really has that kind of nice down home feel to it. Um, Peter Weller is great in this. He is menacing, he is charming, he is everything from charming to completely menacing. He is absolutely wonderful in this. And again, I can't emphasize enough that I wish people knew him for this role outside of RoboCop. RoboCop is great, love me some RoboCop, and it's got a great you know, commentary, social commentary on what the future might be like. Um, but this movie is just so relatable on so many levels, and Peter Weller does a fantastic job. Anyway, I implore you to check it out. It's wonderful. Do it. You'll love it. And enjoy. Like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you next time.